I have another knife I want to share with you today. This is the B1 camping knife from BPS Knives of Ukraine. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank BPS Knives of Ukraine for sending out the B1 so that I could share it with you. So what I thought I would do is just take the camera down where you can get a closer look at this knife. We'll talk about its specifications, then of course we'll start doing some demonstrations. All right, just before we focus in on the knife itself, and of course I'll share the sheath with you. So this is the sheath the knife arrived in, and as I say all the time, you can't beat these sheaths from BPS for the money. They're, they're just, well, look at, look at that. If I can show you, can you see how heavy that leather is and how well built it is? It's nice there. And you know, it's not a high-end custom-made sheath, but it's at least very functional. It does come with a dangler, which I do appreciate, and it does come with a belt loop for those who like to use that. This is worth the money right here all by itself. You know, it, it really is, and I know I'm going on about it. I did put some protectant on it, and that's why it's a little darker than the one you will receive is. So let me just show you what the knife looks like in the sheath, and then we'll start in on the knife. So lots of nice retention right now. It's leather, it's going to stretch, but it's deep enough that it should remain good retention on the knife over time. All right, let me just put the sheath out of the way. We'll talk about the specifications for just a few moments. So the overall length from tip to pommel is 9.05 inches, 230 millimeters. The blade length is 4.33 inches, 110 millimeters. Blade thickness is 0.1 inch, 2.9 millimeters. The handle length is 4.7 inches, 120 millimeters. Now, this steel on this knife is the first of its kind that I've tested from Ukraine. In fact, it's the first of its kind I've tested. This is not the usual 1066 high carbon steel. When they offered me this knife, I thought I would take it in their stainless steel variation just to see how well it held up. Because when I tell you the steel, most of you are going to roll your eyes and think that can't be very good quality. Well, we'll see in a moment, won't we? This is 5CR14MOV stainless steel. So it's not a high carbon stainless steel, but uh, well, let, we'll just put it to the test and we'll see what we come up with. I'll already have some experiences on this that I'll share with you in a minute. The weight overall is 4.9 inches or 140 grams. And as always, the walnut handles as, as usual. And I'm just gonna speak to the handles for a minute before we move on. And I've said this in other videos that, you know, the the, Walnut handles on these knives, as high quality as they are, they don't always come perfectly fitted to the metal. Sometimes they're a little off in the alignment. That's not necessarily a fault of the manufacturer or bad design or bad finishing of the knives. I think it has as much to do with the wood material itself. It's walnut, but it will dry because it's not, it's not uh, stabilized and it's not sealed or anything else. So it's going to dry and that causes it to shrink a little bit. I think when they assemble these and they are using the Allen key here, I don't think they want to over tighten them just for not fear so much, but just to, to ensure that the knife handle doesn't break. Well, what happens is when you get the knife that they can misalign themselves. They, sometimes they come misaligned, and I'll tell you what I mean by that in a minute. And sometimes they become misaligned just through use. And I've experienced that on a few knives. I do have a viewer who commented on that he's had two knives from BPS that were so bad that the metal was actually cutting his fingers or almost cutting his fingers. I've not had that experience, but I have had them where they are shifted. And uh, this one, this one came, it's still perfect. I have not lost any of that perfection. I have on other ones. What I mean is sometimes the wood will rise a little bit or lower a little bit in relation to the back of the knife, exposing the metal edge. And then of course, correspondingly, it's lower or higher on the bottom side. That's not a big issue for me because of course, all I do is use my Allen keys, loosen it off, line it back up and tuck it tug it down very snug. Now you could put a little bit of Loctite in the, the screws or the bolts in this case. If you wanted to, you could even go so far to glue the handle to the blade itself, but I don't think that is necessary. In fact, I think I like the fact that you could get this off or at least tighten it or maintain it if you thought it was going to get rusty. Stainless steel shouldn't though, right? Okay, let's just talk about the design a little bit because this has got to be triggering some memories for some of you. If this doesn't look like a wood lore clone, I don't know what does. In fact, I think it's pretty much an identical copy of the Ward Lore, not the customized ones, of course, but of that generalized design. It does have a drop point, but it is pretty much a true spear point, and that's true of the Wood Clone. Of course, that is so that you can palm it and do some drilling with, 
and uh, it, this one works exactly the same for that purpose. The, it is a full scandy grind. The edge is polished just a tiny bit, and I may have done that by stropping and running down a ceramic rod to where I maintain my edges between uses. The spine is sharp. It'll throw sparks, as you will see. Yeah, other than that, it's identical to a wood lure, even to the point where the ricasso, right here, this metal between the handle and where the edge starts is bigger than it really needs to be. And uh, I think that's one thing they could have left out of the copying of it. I think the blade should come all the way back or much further back. There is no sharpening choil on it, but you know, that's, that's a small price to pay when you're paying this small price. So it's a good looking wood lure clone and it's very functional just the same. You know, this knife is probably of a sufficient quality for batoning. I don't think I'm going to baton it because I just don't feel the need to baton a knife this small. You likely could get away with it, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be splitting some wood out with another knife, and then I'm going to be doing some carving on it just to show you how well it works. All right, let's get started. All right, as I mentioned, I wasn't going to split out any big pieces of wood with this knife. I wanted to just reserve it for carving only, so I do have a larger knife, and I took a big piece of sugar maple and split it down into a bunch of splits. Just chose one that we can use for making a tent peg on because this is going to be sufficient to demonstrate some of the skills and some of the uh, carving ability of this knife. So obviously the first thing we do with a tent peg is put a L7 notch on one end of it. So let me just kind of tap that in. There's my stop cut. And, yep, no issues with that at all, none at all. You know what, I am going to push this knife just a little further in a second, just to see. Like I said, I have been using it, but whenever I get it home, I do put it on a ceramic rod and sharpen it off. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to reserve this for putting a point on, but let's just take something like this piece right here. There's a knot at that end. I'm not going to you know, subject it to the knot, but here's what I want to do. I want to do a full cross baton. Cross grain batoning can be very hard on the edge of a knife. So if I get through this with any reasonable, without any causing any damage to the blade, I'm going to say that the steel is up to the quality, at least for this type of activity. Oh, okay. Bury the knife into the wood. Which end did I just do? Clean cut them both end. I think it's this one is the one that just snapped it off. There's the piece that it cut off. Edge examination. Nothing. No rolling. I don't see any shininess. And I didn't expect it. I mean, it's not a high carbon steel. So it's not likely to roll or chip. Any, well, roll it might. Chip unlikely. All right, that's not a, a sufficient test to tell you how long a steel like this is going to last, but uh, you know you have to do a lot of work to get to a steel to dull on most knives. So let's just move on to doing a few more tasks. One will be to put a point on this stick and then we'll do some feather sticking after that. All right, the point of this test is to assess the knife in multiple handholds or at least one other handhold because of course this is a bushcraft knife. That's its intent. Obviously the original bush lure was built specifically for that reason. So the clone should also perform well enough in it. And what I'm looking for is the comfort in the reverse grip. And I can tell you now that it feels very comfortable. It's not a large handle, certainly not a thick handle, but it is comfortable. The pommel area here where the bird's beak is, is not causing me any hot spots. There is a nice bit of a wrap up here for my thumb to lay on. So that's what I'm looking for is the comfort. Of course, you do have to put it through a bit of wood to see if it's going to remain comfortable. So let's do that now. That's that 10 peg we just created. Now it does need a point. So let's put a point on this using the chest lever. Yeah, well, four. Four and a half slices, we'll say, and I got a point on this piece of rock maple. It's certainly up to that task. All right, let's move on to feather sticking. Another one of those splits that I showed you a minute ago. And uh, all right, well, there are a lot of pinholes in this. At least there's no knots. So let's give this a go as far as feathering and see what happens. It 
taking me a second to find the edge on it, but all right, now we're starting to get some curls. It's just a matter of getting familiar with the edge. I'm not going to create a complete feather stick. I just want to see what it's like to create curls with. I'm just looking at the wood. I'm getting, must be where some bugs have gone through it. The wood is still very hard, but it's powdering. Can you see that on the edge of the blade? It's, every once in a while it'll hit a spot where it powders, and I'm assuming that's where an insect had gone into the wood. But uh, yeah, like that, and that's funny. I've never really experienced that before. Yeah, there's a spot, oh, I can actually see it. Just of interest, has nothing to do with the feathering. You probably can see there's like a powder right here. And there was a little tunnel, I guess, where the, an insect of some type bored into the wood, and that's what I'm hitting, and it's creating this dust on, on the knife. All right. Yep, this will feather sufficiently. I like that the blade curve up here is kind of gradual, which means that you get more control if you're trying to work out at the tip with the knife. Once again, this is very hard wood. All right, feathers, but does it scrape? Last task before we wrap this video up is do a little uh, scraping. This is the same stick I was just feathering. I cut the feathers off here and I'm just looking for, I'm going to work on the outside edge just a little bit here and I have a little piece of pine I split out for capturing my scrapings. Yeah, it's scraping that. I'm just going to do a little work here at the tip and at the back of the spine, towards the handle. All right, it's catching some scrapings. I've had better, but that's not bad at all. How about fatwood? We all love fatwoods. So let's see if we can scrape a little fatwood with this knife. No problem there with fatwood. As long as the wind doesn't blow it away, I will try and ignite it with my ferrocerium rod. Lighting and then, oh no, it was caught. The wind just wasn't going to give it the benefit of the doubt. All right, that's enough demonstrations as far as scraping is concerned. Let's wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments for the B1 from BPS Knives out of Ukraine, the one I'm calling the Woodlore clone. And uh, okay, it worked the way as I expected it to. You know, I have done some testing with this. The edge has so far, it's all gooey now from the fatwood, has maintained its edge, no rolls, no chips. I didn't expect any chips with that steel. But the question I guess I had for myself was, was what would that 5CR14 MOV work like over the long term? Well, I can't give you a long term evaluation of it, but I can say so far in all the testing I have, it's worked out okay. You know, I have, I have experienced some dulling, not extreme. It's not like you put it to a piece of wood and immediately starts to dull. It's not doing that. In fact, this is as sharp as it was when I brought it out today. So I have no problem there. A lot of it has to do with the heat treat. Can the knife maker get the most that the steel is capable of. And I think BPS has obviously done that. Yes, it's an inexpensive steel for them to work with. And of course, that's why they choose it. But the talent, the skill, and the value of the knife comes in the fact that can they make it perform for as much as the steel is capable of doing? I think certainly they have. Now, the nice thing about a steel like this, it may, well, the fact that it's stainless steel, of course, is beyond the fact that it is stainless steel, is the fact that it may dull a little quicker than other steels but it's going to be easy to sharpen as well. You know, like I said, I have maintained this through the different uses I put it by just running it down a ceramic rod and across a strop and it's brought it back just fine. You know, I didn't do any batoning with this in hindsight. Well, I did, I did that cross batoning, but I didn't do full length batoning to see how tough it would be. You know, with a blade that thick, 
and a scanty grind, still only that thin. Yeah, I think you could probably do a fair amount of batoning with this. I just, the piece I had was started off as a four inch round of uh, rock maple, so I wasn't gonna try that with this knife. It was just, that's a little bit much, much to ask. That's outside of the mission, we'll say, for a knife like this. Handles are on just the way they were when I started today. I didn't expect any difference there. It is, as all the BPS knives are, a quality, high value proposition. It, it's not going to take you up into the range of a custom knife or even knives maybe three times this cost. It's getting close to something twice this cost though in performance. It may not, it's you know very utilitarian looking, but for people that are looking for a budget knife and want to have the confidence that it's going to continue to work for them regardless of what they put it through, this, this is the one to have, and as I mentioned before, you can't beat that sheath because sometimes I've had half-decent knives come to me and crappy sheaves. Not this. This is the sheath that I'm proud to carry on my hip without uh, question, as is the, the handle. And it's one of those things, it's not very expensive. If you want to modify it, make it a little bit better, maybe make the spine a little bit sharper like I'm likely going to do, and uh, maybe even change with the handles if you have a skill for that or a desire for that. I might, you know, put something inside of here only because it's a little thin right through here from my hands. But other than that, it works. It's got the length. You can see I still have material coming out both ends of it, or of my hand. So it's long enough, just not really fat enough, I guess, for me. But that's what I'm looking for in a knife, is something a little bit more than this. I'm perfectly happy using this, but I may want to modify it at some point, I guess I'm saying. All right, I think that's enough rambling about this knife. It lives up to its name as a quality knife for the money. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. I'll put all the specifications for this knife as well as the links where you can take another look, for, look at it in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path left travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.